Or... I can't remember. Did I fuck that up? No. Um, <laughs> should we tell him to shut the fuck up? Maybe. It just depends. Okay. Hey, can you guys be more quiet? We're trying to film a fucking TV show. Sorry, we're leaving. Okay, I love you. <laughs> ready? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. So what's your name? I'm Dan Lesko. And how old are you, Dan Lesko? I just turned 28. Alright, so who are you on a soul level? Who am I on a soul level? Um, I don't know, do I have like a category to pick from here? Or like, <laughs> Do you have categories to who you are as a human? I would say it depends on the day. Okay, so today, what does your soul look like? Like, who are you to the core? Um, I don't know, I think that... I'm someone that's trying to make the best of borrowed time. That makes sense. Uh, I try to do as much good stuff as possible, um, but I feel like I still have a, a dark side. You know, like I, I crave chaos. So I, I try not to create chaos in other people's lives, but uh, you know, you know that that internet meme that's like, I just want to do hood rat shit with my friends. <laughs> like, I feel like, like the I, I like feel that to my core a lot. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I I love AA and I love all that shit, but I also like love driving fast and running from the police and doing shit like that too. So, do you still run from the police? Uh, yeah, that's what we'll be doing tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So where do you think that, like, yearn for chaos came from? Like, when do you think it started? Um, probably... So when I, when I was younger, like, growing up on my parents' street, I had a neighbor, and he would skateboard at, like, the top of the cul-de-sac in our street, and he had this, like, little wooden ramp that he would put out front and he would set that shit on fire. <laughs> like right in the middle of the road, like in broad daylight and like, you know, jump off of it on a skateboard or on his bike. And I just thought that was the coolest fucking thing in the world. And I wanted to do all of that. Um, and I have a, I have a memory of being out there um, like young as fuck, like five years old. And they told me, they're like, lie down at the end of the ramp and we're going to jump over you on our bikes. And I was like, hell yeah, dude, I'll do that. And so I'm like lying down and they're jumping me like, you know, the length of me, like from the bottom of the ramp to like the tip of my head. And my dad comes out and he's like, Daniel, like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, why don't you come back over here? And he's like, yeah, let's just, like, pass the football around. And that was the first and last time I played football with my dad. Um, they got me a skateboard when I was in, like, third grade. And it's just on ever since then. Do you still skate? Um, not anymore. Like, it's kind of fucked up. I think the last time I was on a skateboard was when Eddie died last year. Mm -hmm. But, uh... I still, like, associate myself with a lot of characteristics of that culture. I mean, Grant and I, like, don't smoke weed anymore, but uh, I still enjoy skateboarding and, like, the kind of, like, punk rock ruthless aspect of it, you know, like, saying fuck you to security guards and shit like that. Like, I don't do that anymore, but, like, I appreciate watching videos of it, <laughs> so. Okay. So now I'm going to give you some categories okay. to choose from. So all of these things don't really have anything to do with each other, but they could, depending on the kind of person you are. Okay. So the first category is love, sex, and relationships. Okay. The next category is society, culture, and politics. Okay. And the next category is spirituality and religion. So which one of those groups of things means the most to you, 
and which one of those groups of things mean the least to you. And you can always mix match if okay. you want. All right. Um, I would say love, sex, and relationships is the most important um, because that is like the most personal level kind of like interaction that you can have with another human. Uh, and I think that politics and culture and all of those things branch out of that. Um, and then same with like politics and religion. Or I can't remember. Did I fuck that up? No. Um, <laughs> no, it's fine. But yeah, poli so yeah, politics and religion go together, kind of. But spirituality and religion was the okay. one category. Okay. So. I think if I was going to put it like hierarchically, love and relationships are at the top, then culture and religion come second, and then politics comes third. Okay. Uh, because I think that politics spawn out of the first two categories. Okay. So tell me about your experience with love and relationships, since that's the most important to you. Like, why? Um... This is actually kind of interesting, and it's a, it's a notion that I feel like I've only actually more recently come to accept. Uh, I'll give you a little background about it. So I remember it's my like freshman year of college. I'm down in school at, at Asheville, and I dated this girl who I want to say was doing some sort of political science major. And I remember asking her, I was like, you know, why are you doing this major, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I just love people. And I remember looking at her and I was like, I fucking hate everyone. Like, I don't like people. People are the worst. Um, and I really, truly thought that at the time. And I think, uh, I think it's because I was so easy to, like, just assign people a label and you know think that they just suck because of whatever label I had assigned to them and like I could only move past that um you know maybe if I like got to know them or something like that and then so like fast forward to like within the last couple of months um you know I for all, for all your viewers out there um, <laughs> I, I'm in AA and I've been trying to like get reconnected with every, like not with everyone, but like with more people in AA. And then I also think back to like what, like how, how I try to like interact with the world as a whole. I don't like to do anything by myself. Like if I could choose to like eat ice cream alone or eat ice cream with literally fucking anyone I would rather choose to get ice cream with like another person mm -hmm. just as a for example like I yearn to be around other people um and that's true like even when I play video games at night like I'm playing a game that we're all linked up over headsets like talking to each other the whole night uh and even when I'm at work, you know, I want to work on a project with another person, things like that. So it made me realize that uh, I do value the relationships that I have with other people a lot more strongly than I might have previously considered. I still think that, like, and this is something that I'm not going to be original in saying, that uh, humanity as a whole kind of sucks in my opinion um why and th this i mean it, it goes both ways i mean obviously mankind has like overcome many many great things together um but it's also the group that uh you know if you if you have a group of people together and you provide them with like a negative idea and they like one person latches onto it and spreads it to another person, it's a lot easier for that negative idea to grow without giving any like individual individuality to it. Mm -hmm. um, like 
you know, I fucking would say, like, I hate all Republicans. They're motherfuckers. But actually, when I talk to, like, my one friend who's a Republican, like, he's not a bad guy, just talking to him, like, one-on-one. But, like, as a whole, they, you know, have created policies that have, like, consistently fucked over the American people over and over and over again. Mm. So it's, like, kind of like that. Democrats are actually not absolved from this phenomenon either. Um, But that's, like, another... (laughs) <laughs> another thing that maybe you'll get to I don't know <laughs> okay so you said at the bottom was what, what was least important to you out of those things did politics. you say politics yeah. okay why you know politics is like trying to impose culture on a group of people that may not necessarily all share the same cultures Um, And granted, it's, like, not always that exact thing. You know, like, laws like wearing your seatbelt that are created by politicians, like, those are probably good. Um, But then you, like, get into the whole, like, no abortions or, like, no gay marriage or something like that. And, like, I don't don't fucking care if you do either of those things. Right. So, like, especially, like especially gay marriage like why the fuck would I care about anything like that like you know I I see the like um I see the like moral dilemma that people have with abortion and I still think that you know it should be a woman's right to do whatever the fuck they decide to do but like two people want to get married and like I don't know them and like they're probably like just two good guys trying to hang out all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, why the fuck do I care? And why do you, and why do you care? Oh, because, like, someone, like, allegedly wrote a book, like, 2,000 years ago that said that that's, like, not cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And then, you know, we, then you have people that pick and choose things out of that book that they want to, like, apply to everyone. Um, but then other things they don't want to apply to everyone, you know what I mean? So are you, are you spiritual? Yes. At all? Okay. I'm guessing you're not religious. I am not religious. Okay. Okay. Um, before we keep going, I'm going to get you to start drawing. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick a color from all of these one that represents your mood right now and one that you think represents your life (laughs) and you can pick you can pick more than one color if you want to but you have to know why you feel how you feel with these colors okay all right and here's your pet so i see you have purple and green show everybody the purple and green that you (laughs) so why did you pick those um green for right now because it's kind of like light and happy and springtime and i'm like feeling good because i don't know it's like 70 degrees out and that's awesome (laughs) and then purple um because i think purple kind of like represents some sort of like deeper understanding of life and things like that um that's always been the color of like wisdom to me and not that i'm like super wise by any means but uh excuse me like i don't know i guess it's like a comfortable color to like um try and move towards in life Mm. if that makes sense yeah so okay so, you're going to draw, and then at the end, you're going to show everybody what you drew. Okay, so I, d- I just draw now? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. While you draw, tell me what makes you the most upset. Still probably disappointing uh, myself, or, like, it's, it's, it's usually comes down to, like, not getting my own way, um, which is, like... I guess they're they're gonna say addict behavior right um but that can kind of apply to like a large 
array of things. I mean, like, you know, I didn't get my way when fucking Donald Trump was elected, and I was, like, kind of pissed off about that. Um, <laughs> like, I feel bad when, um, I don't know, like, someone challenges my opinion or something like that. It, it all usually comes down to, like, um, my expectations, uh, like, falling, falling short of reality, or reality falls short of my expectations, um, and I, I feel like that's a super fucking broad thing to even say, but, okay, like, like fucking, yeah, politics pisses me off constantly, um, like, I don't know, when people do fucking stupid shit at work, that kind of pisses me off. I don't have anything that, like, gets me really, really mad these days. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that means I'm, like, getting more acceptant of, uh, you know, when life. I don't get my way, right. you know, practicing life on life's terms. <laughs> but <laughs> that, I would say, like, if I had to choose something, that's still probably it. Okay. So, what excites you more than anything? I just like feeling, feeling wanted and like worthy, uh, cause I didn't for a long time, so. Okay. What are you most afraid of? Um, <laughs> getting AIDS and dying alone. I don't know why that's like my reserve, but uh, like, yeah, I don't know that that's a fucking interesting story. I um, so obviously like don't want to die alone. I'm single right now, you know, for all the ladies out there. But um, <laughs> I feel like uh, getting. And this, this is like, God, this is like super personal and I don't know why it's such a strong reservation of mine, but getting a, uh, sexually transmitted disease like HIV, even though it's not like the death sentence that it used to be, um, you know, trying to like seek out a partner and then like explain that to them seems like it would just be like too awful of a thing to ever have to do, um, and so that's always just been kind of like the thing that was like, you know, if I like get this, it's just fucking like, I don't want to deal with that. Mm. So I don't know. That's like, you make sense. You don't sound crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you were an expression, like what would you be? Like make a face that explains who you are as a human. <laughs> Make a face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is that? Why is that you? Um, that's me laughing in the face of absurdity. Um, one of my favorite kind of forms of existentialist thought, which is like a like genre of philosophy, for lack of a better word, is trying to live one's life as authentically as possible in the face of what is an absurd world. Um, and so like this, like this is fucking crazy. I, okay, so I'm, I'm staying up real late last night cause I just have terrible insomnia and I'm reading on the internet and I find out that today somewhere in Washington state, they're going to have this convention uh, for the Church of Genesis 2, which is a cult. Um, and their cult believes that drinking bleach can cure HIV, malaria, autism. And it's caught on with the autism, like, anti-vax movement. And they're giving their fucking children bleach enemas. This is not a joke. I couldn't what? fucking believe it. And so I went down this like internet black hole last night 
and it was just like, wow, fucking, like, you know that fucking quote from, like, what is it, the Avengers or whatever, reality is often disappointing, like, yeah, that shit's absurd, how the fuck is that, like, even a thing that humans, like, are gonna buy into, so, you know, like, I, I read shit like that, and then I, like, just t kind of, like, continue to navigate through life, like, okay, well, I'm, like, not that fucking retarded, um, <laughs> you know, and I'm, like, trying to do okay things, but, like, at the same time, like, the world out there is fucking ridiculous, and crazy shit just, like, happens all the time, and you can't control it ever, so, you know, you gotta just try and, you know, be authentic and live in the moment as much as possible, so, that's, that face is me just like, like, oh, oh, like, are you fucking serious, dude? Like, laughing in the face of, like, an absurd world. Okay. That was a good answer. Um, do you have any weird habits? Uh, yeah, I mean, I bite my nails and, like, pick my nose. I don't know. Is that, is there, are there weirder habits? I mean. <sighs> um... I mean, I wouldn't say, like, nothing outside of, like, the ordinary. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, not that I, like, do a bunch of ordinary shit all the time, but, like, I don't, I don't know if I, if, if I would classify them as, like, weird habits. If that makes sense. Okay. So. All right. So, explain to me what social media is you <laughs> my first go-to response is a cancer um but that's just because that's kind of funny to say in a way it's not entirely wrong um I think that social media serves an, an important purpose in the lives of the people that use it um and that very same purpose is easily exploited uh, I like to use social media to, you know, connect with my friends and see what's going on and things like that. Like, I don't, I'm not chasing the clout, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how many Instagram followers I have, and I think my last picture got, like, 10 likes. But there are people who, like, are totally fucking obsessed with it. Um, and then there are the people who look at the people with a lot of clout and they're like, why am I not like that? Like, why, as a male, am I not that beautiful brunette girl that's on the beach, <laughs> you know, with the sandy ass, like, drinking some fucking neon cocktail? Like, like, dude, I want to be her. Like, that looks <laughs> lit as fuck. Um, but, you know, I don't, like, dwell on that too much. Um... But, it, you know, social media is also a way for, like, the mass sharing of, like, incorrect information uh, to, like, largely scalable audiences, like, very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, for that reason, it is a cancer. It's very easy to spread terrible shit to a lot of people very quickly. So it's like... It's one of those things that, like, it's, like, you know, that secret weapon that, like, if used correctly, like, it can be great, and, like, you can do good stuff with it, but if used poorly, it's, like, okay, well, now you just got a fucking bunch of idiots on the internet giving their children bleach enemas. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? For sure, for like, sure. Um, um, what do you feel will restore connection in our generation? Like, what do you think can restore connection in our world? I'm going to stay, like, with the millennials, though, because the world, that's a, that's a big question. But I guess in our generation, what do you think we can do? Uh, this is going to sound like such a hopeless outlook. Um, I personally don't think that... So, okay, so I, I guess I have me, I have a, a, an optimistic outlook, so, like, you know, fucking, 
it's 2020 or whatever, and Bernie Sanders gets elected, and he fucking implements, like, free college and free health care and all this shit, and people see, like, how great, you know, it is to live um, with these, like, you know, united benefits and things like that, and they're like, oh, okay, like, you know, maybe uh, the Republicans were wrong all along, right? Like, we can, you know, support education for all and all of these things, um, and, you know, that education and, like, access to resources and things like that allows us the time to, like, become more connected with one another. I think that would be fucking great, um, but I don't think that that's gonna happen. Uh, I think that it's gonna get a lot worse, um, and that, like, that's, that sucks, right, you know, uh, and, it's funny because my dad once told me that when he was my age that they always thought that it was going to get worse and worse and worse too. Mm. Uh, so like hopefully I'm wrong. But like right now the country's super divided, right? And you know we got fucking, we got CNN saying that Donald Trump is guilty of collusion and all this shit and then he's going out and posting tweets that all the people in that investigation or treasonous and just like fucking wild shit um so what i really think is gonna happen is like you know shit is gonna kind of like deform into like a stronger chaos than it is now and it's going to make people band together out of necessity mm -hmm. uh rather than um out of like positivity I feel like, you know, like, fucking, like, when 9-11 happened, and, like, people put aside their differences to, like, help out, mm -hmm. you know, shit like that, and, like, that was, that was great, um, but, you know, then, of course, never forget 9-11, in my opinion, has turned into something that's, like, never forget when these World Trade Centers burned down so that you don't think about the fact that we literally invaded foreign countries to like kill their citizens and steal their oil after we lied about finding weapons of mass destruction like forget that last part just don't forget about the towers and the people who died mm. so uh, sorry that was like a tangent i just had to get that out there mm. but um uh, yeah i think i think it'll take something tragic to make people band together what are you most self-conscious about um, <laughs> most self-conscious about. I'm trying to think because there's like definitely more than one thing. Um, I guess like, I don't know. Probably, probably my appearance and also my reputation. I don't know. I guess that's... What's up with your reputation? Why are you self-conscious about it? Um, well, I cheated on my ex-girlfriend. All of my mm -hmm. old friends know about it, and I'd lost all of them. Um, and it, like, feels bad to think about still, and I regret doing it, obviously. Did well, you apologize? Yeah, many times. Okay. It's a. We stayed together for a year and a half after it happened. Okay. And we almost got engaged. There's an engagement ring sitting in this, like, other room over there. So we didn't. We never actually got engaged though. Mm. Uh. It yeah. I. So like yeah that that is embarrassing for me. Um. And kind of, like, the fallout of, like, what happened about that, like, you know, uh, and the last few people I dated, I kind of, like, was like, oh, I'm a terrible person, like, these are the things that I've done, <laughs> and so I, like, I guess this is, like, for your video, so I'm, like, talking about it, but, uh, like, I try to project a more positive, um, aura so like I don't bring that shit up anymore because I've largely forgiven myself for it like it still feels bad 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I've definitely learned a lot from it. But, like, it's one of those things that um, I can only show that I've learned from it by, like, you know, moving forward and doing stuff. And I also, like, haven't been in a relationship since then, so. Mm. Like, I'm just trying to, like, not be as much of an asshole because I know that sometimes I'm just a huge fucking asshole. Mm. And it's probably, like... It's a mix of, like, me trying to be funny, but my humor is, like, maybe a little bit too crude for some people. And then also, like, if I think you're being an asshole, I'm just going to be a fucking huge asshole to you. Mm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, like, a thing. But okay. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> Show us what you drew. How, what is that? That's a palm tree and a moon. Yeah. Um, I always kind of like palm trees. This is like almost like the South Carolina flag, uh, if you know what that looks like. And I've always just kind of liked that aesthetic. Um, or do you have any ties to South Carolina? No. I, well, I, I, I have a cousin who lives there, but I don't like really personally have any ties. I just... And, like, I've never spent any time in that state, but I just like the, like, aesthetic of that flag. It's calming to me. Like, mm-hmm. being somewhere, like, tropical, uh, like, under the stars, like, at nighttime mm-hmm. um, is, like, pleasant to me. And then also, I mean, when I was in high school, we used to smoke a lot of weed at this smoke spot we called the island. So mm. I've spent, I've, I've drawn this picture, like, more than once. What do you have to say to the world? Short and sweet, just. Um. I don't know. Try to be your authentic self, and don't let these motherfuckers discourage you. <laughs> Success is the best revenge. That was three things, but I like them all, so we'll use them all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for doing this interview. <laughs> Are there anything else? No. That's it. Okay. Here we have one more time. <laughs> Perfect. This is Dan Lesko in the flesh. <laughs> okay.